What is a radioactive decay? It is simply the emission of some source of radiation from an unstable nucleus. The most common radioactive decay is alpha decay and beta decay. In an alpha decay, a alpha particle with two protons and two neutrons is emitted from a mother nucleus. The resulting daughter nucleus is smaller. In the beta decay, a electron is emitted, which is negatively charged. A neutron in the mother nucleus has to be converted into a proton in the daughter nucleus. The proton is positively charged. The overall charge is still zero. The daughter nucleus after an alpha or beta decay is normally an excited nucleus state. That is to say that the neutrons and the protons in the daughter nucleus wants to get closer to each other by squeezing out some energy in the form of gamma rays, which are energetic electromagnetic waves. The radioactive decay process is not enabled in the standard reference physics list. However, you can use a macro command provided by GM4 called physics list factory at radioactive decay to enable it. Note that in Gears, this command becomes available only when a reference physics list is chosen using the command physics list select. This can be demonstrated using the GM4 Qt GUI. The available GM4 macro commands are listed in the sidebar. Initially, there is only one command under the physics list folder, select. If we use it to select a physics list, QGSP BERT for example, more commands become available in this folder, including factory add radioactive decay. If we run this command, to add radioactive decay to the current physics list and initialize the run. Another group of commands appear under the folder grdm. I guess it means GM4 radioactive decay module or method. You can use them to fine tune your radioactive decay simulation. For example, to limit your radioactive decay only in some of the nuclear isotopes. The last command, set time window, is not provided by GM4. It is only available in gears. We're going to mention the usage of it later. As already demonstrated before, you have to initialize the run after all the physics list commands, so that all the particles and their associated physics processes are really constructed in the memory. After that, you can use a command called process list to check if the desired physics processes are actually enabled. If you add decay at the end of this command, only the decay related processes are listed. The first process is related to the decay of kaons, pions, and muons, so on and so forth. While the second decay process is related to the decay of uh, nuclei, or you can call them ions if you don't consider the orbiting electrons. After you initialize the radioactive decay process, you can use the GPS particle command to create a primary particle for a GM4 simulation. In this specific case, you will have to use ion as your primary particle. You can then use the GPS ion command to specify the number of protons and the total number of nucleons in your ion. The ion we're simulating here is lead to 10, which is an unstable lead isotope in the radon decay chain. Radon is a natural existing radioactive gas. It can leak into your basement through cracks. In a few days, it will go through a series of alpha and beta decays to lead to 10. Deposit on the surface of something in your basement. The half-life of lead to 10, 22 years, is much longer than those of other isotopes in the decay chain. 
That's why they can patiently stay on the surface of a detector for years, waiting for its time to come to decay into other isotopes and become a serious background or fluid detector searching for new physics processes. That's why we need to assign zero kinetic energy to them using the command GPS energy. Otherwise, the default 1 MeV kinetic energy will be assigned to them by GPS. And this is not what you want. Now, let's enable tracking variables and run the script to find out how the simulation is done. The first particle is led to 10 with a kinetic energy 0. It radioactive decays into three particles. The first one is an electron, the second one is an antineutrino, and the third one is bismuth 210 in its excited state. It decays into its ground state by emitting a gamma ray with a kinetic energy of 46 keV, which is exactly the excited energy of the mother nucleus, and it becomes polonium 210 which alpha decays into lead-206. Lead-206 is stable. It cannot radioactive decay into something else. The simulation stops here. To summarize, we start our simulation with a lead-210 at rest, which beta decays into bathmium-210 and then to polonium-210. It alpha decays into lead-206, which is stable, and our simulation stops here. The whole decay chain is simulated in one jump for event. However, the half-life of bismuth-210 and polonium-210 are 5 days and 138 days, respectively. Which means if you use a real radiation detector to detect this radioactive decay chain, the three decays will be recorded as three separated events. Fortunately, GM4 records the time when the decay happens. We can use the time information to split these three decays into three different events. Gears provides the macro command grdm set time window to split the decay chain based on a time window specified by you. If we set the time window to be one second, if the bismuth 210 decays one minute after the lead 210 decay, then these two decays will be regarded as two different events. However, if bismuth 210 decays half second after the lead to 10 decay, then these two decays will be recorded in the same event. We've learned how to use the tracking variables command to display detailed information within a jump for event. There is also a command for you to increase the verbosity of an event to show how a track is passed from one event to another when the splitting of the decay chain is enabled. Let's set a time window to one second and then run the script. Pay attention to the message enabled by the event verbals2 command. According to the stacking mechanism section in the GM4 menu for application developers, a particle, in this case LED206, can be put into a waiting stack so that it won't be processed in the previous event. This waiting track can be reclassified as an urgent track and to be processed in the next event. The tracking variables show us that a polonium-210 radioactive decays into lead-206 and emitted an alpha particle. And the event variables show us that the two secondary particles with the track ID 16 and 17 are passed to G4 Stack Manager, where they are classified as waiting tracks. Gears saves the current event to the output and then reclassify the two waiting tracks to two urgent tracks and send them to G4 Tracking Manager, where they are tracked in a new event. Let's open the generated root file and get the total number of events saved in it, which is larger than what's specified in our macro file. To understand how one event is split to four in the output file, we can use the ttree scan command 
to print out some relevant variables saved in the output file. We can see that the simulation start at time 0 with LED to 10 as the first track. More than 5 years after, LED to 10 decays into an excited state of uh, bismuth to 10 with an electron and an anti-neutrino. Since the dotted particles are created long time after the start of the simulation, LED to 10 is saved in one event and its dotted particles are saved in another event. Let's take a look at the last alpha decay of polonium to 10 into LED to 6 as another example. It happens long time after the previous decay. That's why polonium to 10 and LED to 6 are saved in two different events.